another episode of Equity Mates on Ausbiz. My name is Bryce, and as always, I'm joined by my equity buddy, Ren. How are you going? I'm very good, Bryce. Great to be back uh, for another Tuesday. Yes. A lot happening in the world. And, always. <laughs> uh, we are going to take a trip overseas in today's episode. A place we go a lot on the yes, show. Yes, I was going to say, what, what's new? Not that exotic. What's new? Welcome. We're going back Welcome. to the States. <laughs> back to the States. That's right, Ren. We are, we're heading uh, back to the USA and we're going to be talking about SPAC, the world of SPACs. Because SPAC City. SPAC City. <laughs> yeah. As always, uh, there's a lot going on in SPAC City and uh, there's two big mergers or SPAC, uh, SPACs that happened last week yeah. that caught our attention. Yeah. Um, the first being WeWork. And the second being Trump. Yeah, Can't stay out yeah. of the news, old Trump. Yeah. One because we're both a big user and the other because you're a big fan. <laughs> no, we'll let yeah. the audience big decide. fan of WeWork. We'll let the audience <laughs> Love decide which WeWork. Which <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's start with the first one, Ren. Uh, WeWork. Yeah. Um, yeah. currently Well uh, hold on, hold on. Let's just just at the very top explain both deals. So sure. SPACs, special purpose acquisition companies, blank check companies, raise a bunch of money and then go and try and find a company to acquire. Uh, there was, there, both of these SPACs were listed on the NASDAQ. Uh, the BowX Acquisition Corp uh, has announced it's going to acquire, well, has acquired WeWork, a uh, deal I think was $9 billion. And then Digital World Acquisition Corp uh, has announced a merger with Trump's new business. No one said the businesses had to exist yet. That's no. the key caveat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the context. Two SPACs announced two big mergers. Let's start with WeWork. Also, side note, anything that ends <laughs> in corp, I have a little... They, it sounds a bit dodgy to me. No offence to any businesses out there that end in corp, but both both of those just... Okay. Yeah. You're more of like a holdings man? Yeah, I'm a holdings or, man. Or, I, I actually, or an I'm, ink. I'm partial to an industry. <laughs> no, I'm, the industry's not bad. Yeah, corp, don't like it. Okay, good anyway, to know. So, All right, so anyway, WeWork. <laughs> WeWork. Unpack them. Let's do it. WeWork, as you said, Ren, $9 billion merger. Uh, its ticker is now uh, WE, W-E, yep. listed on the New York Stock Exchange. A bit about WeWork. Uh, we have uh, some insider knowledge now. We are a user of WeWork, but they have 750 locations around the world. Higher density here in Sydney, I must say. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and uh, across 150 cities, 38 different countries. Um, but two year years ago, they did try to go public, Ren. Yeah, they did. For $47 billion. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> WeWork uh, was led by their founder and uh, CEO, Adam Newman. Uh, he raised a lot of money from SoftBank's Vision Fund um, and was trying to go public at a $47 billion valuation. It all collapsed um, and Newman got swept out. Uh, the SEC uh, started investigating uh, mis or like inadequate disclosures. Yep. The New York Attorney General started investigating for possible self-dealing. Uh, it was tough. The company collapsed. There was a podcast named called We Crash. We Crash, yeah, yeah, definitely go and check it out. It was a phenomenal and spectacular crash. You know, you know, people are writing you off when it's like We Crashed. It's like they're not coming back. They're, they're not done. coming back, yeah. <laughs> and and it happened so quickly. They went for the IPO. They did the road show, and then within a matter of months, they were done. They were done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they weren't done. Well, they just back. looked done. Yeah. And so in the years since, uh, actually before, so just on this New York Attorney General investigation. The, they were in, one of the things they were investigating was self-dealing because he, Adam Newman personally trademarked yeah. the we yeah. and then was going to sell it to WeWork. Yeah. That would be like you behind my back yeah. trademarking Equity Mates <laughs> yeah. and then saying you're going to sell that yeah, to Yeah, Equity Mates has actually got to buy the trademark. Yeah. Who owns it? Oh, Bryce owns it. What a surprise. Um, so don't do that. I won't do that. <laughs> so in the years since, Adam Newman left. He got like a $1.7 billion uh, like golden handshake, got pa golden parachute, whatever you call it. Um, yeah. So he did it all right for himself. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, then the there were several rounds of layoffs post IPO as the company tried to cut costs. Then COVID nineteen hit, and you know the office space bill, uh, the office space industry is decimated. So then we were cut two thirds of their headcount. Uh, exited or renegotiated hundreds of leases. People were like, Where, how can this business recover? But they did. 
Yeah. Uh, and they've seen through the pandemic and now all of a sudden people are like, well, flexible office space is going to be really important in this new way of working and investors are bullish. Yeah, I mean, they've done pretty well to weather the storms. And I must say, I, there are, I, I remember at the same time that uh, Newman was getting these huge sort of payouts, or they were speak of getting these payouts. I'm not, sh I'm not yeah, actually he sure he, yeah. he did. Yeah. They were, you know, slashing staff member um, headcount, and and it was, you know, one of those awful situations for everyone getting cut to see these ridiculous payouts to, uh, you know, Newman. But um, y they've they've done well, and I think uh, given what's happened with COVID. Uh, we've seen firsthand how it's all now starting to come back here in Sydney anyway. And a lot of the mm. business is now looking for this flexible sort of, you know, we're going to have three quarters of the workforce working while others remain at home or that flexible option. WeWork have positioned themselves pretty well. So in saying all that, WeWork still don't make money. No. They lost $3 billion in the first half of 2021. Wow. So burning cash. I think that's more than when they tried to go public in 2017, like a bigger loss. Um, they, their market cap is now $9 billion, uh, but they're up about 13% from when the SPAC took them over. So a little bit of love from the market. But still, what, a fifth of what they were going to go originally yeah. or thereabouts. Now, <laughs> if you were SoftBank, Spewing. you're probably not too happy because uh, they have invested close to $20 billion in a company that's now valued at nine. Yeah. Tough, but uh, look, if they are long-term and they see this... Very, very I long guess. term. <laughs> I mean, look, the, the, the prospects are pretty good. The question is, is, does WeWork have anything that gives them a competitive advantage? Sure, they've got a lot of buildings. Maybe that gives them some, some negotiating leverage. But in every market, they're competing against a com, you know, other, offer, other providers that are basically offering a commodity product. Shared workspace, a couple of walls, a desk, a chair. And, and at generally a cheaper price. Yeah, and you know, yeah. we've, we're in Sydney and we know that there are a number of local competitors here. I think Spaces is one in Common, Sydney. Just well, open. Well, Spaces is one in Sydney that has a whole bunch of space, Spaces. <laughs> uh, but then in Melbourne, Commons mm. uh, is another operator and they've expanding to Sydney. Mm. And it feels like in every local market that we work are trying to compete in, there would be those local Spaces or Commons competitors that are you know, maybe at a slight cost disadvantage because they don't have the scale, but not really. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's an interesting one to see, like, can they build a brand that gives them enough of a competitive advantage or can they sell to those enterprise clients that don't want to negotiate with a different flexible workplace provider yeah, in yeah, every yeah. city that they just get Microsoft's global contract? Yeah. yeah. Well, we were speaking with um, one of the reps and I know that um, I think it's Uber has a massive... Uh, contract with them over in the Philippines or something like that. So yeah, maybe that's the vibe they're going down. But uh, gut feeling, is it going on your watch list or not? It's not going on my watch list, but you know, it's an interesting story. Um, I, I hope they do well. Yeah. I hope they do very well and we can stay Someone who has time. done well from it though is Newman, who still holds stock and is now, uh, I think, made even an, an, a billion or two from that. So... Not bad. Yeah. But anyway, uh, another S massive... Speaking of people who want to try and make a billion from a SPAC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Trump, uh, back in the media, has announced yeah. a merger with Digital World Acquisition Corp, as we said at the top. Uh, and Ren, his SPAC is absolutely flying up as much as 1,650% since the deal was announced. Yeah. So to be clear, it's not his SPAC. Yeah. Yeah. But he is being acquired by this SPAC. Uh, SPACs, their share price normally is around $10. That's sort of what it lists that. They generally trade around there because they're just a bucket of cash until they decide to buy something. Uh, before this deal was announced, uh, this SPAC, the share price was $9.95. So around that $10 mark, a little bit lower. Within two days, it shot up to $175 <laughs> a share. <laughs> and maybe that's the power You're of trust. 10 bags in like 36 <laughs> hours. I know, that's crazy. <laughs> so WeWork, uh, a real company that merged... Uh, are we, what are we seeing here? Are we seeing uh, Digital World Acquisition Corp merging with an, an, another existing business? Yeah, we're seeing a 22-page slide deck. <laughs> Half of the slides, it's actually, it's pretty funny. We should have got pulled some of the slides for this, but you can jump online and see it. Half of the slides just talk about Trump's Twitter following. <laughs> <laughs> so this SPAC at the moment 
doesn't have any uh, any business running. No, so the business is called Trump Media and Technology Group, TMTG. And from the second uh, slide, uh, the vision on the, the vision statement begins, TMTG aspires to create a media powerhouse to rival the liberal media consortium and fight back against the big tech companies of Silicon Valley who have used their unilateral power to silence opposing voices in America. So he's going, he wants to create a right-wing media company. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what is that going to actually involve? So they've got <laughs> uh, three arms to the business. Truth Social, which okay. according to the slide deck is taking on Twitter and Facebook. For obvious reasons, Trump's been cleared out of those platforms, all of that. <laughs> uh, TMTG Plus, taking on Netflix and Disney. If I was Disney, I would be a little bit ropeable that they've taken my naming convention. Like Disney Plus yeah, is plus. our streaming service. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just taken it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then TMTG News, which is taking on CNN and iHeartMedia. And what, I guess they want to mirror a bit of a Fox News vibe in yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. And then they've got, a, they've got another thing, which is longer term TMTG tech stack. And it says it's taking on AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud and Stripe. So they're picking a fight with a lot of big companies. A lot of big companies who have huge addressable markets. Um, so good luck to them. And I think this feels like it's Trump just wanting to create something for himself that he can't get struck out of. Well, yeah. There. Well, I think there's a lot of uh, you know Trump got cancelled and all that stuff. So they're saying they're building a non-cancelable global community. So. But the irony was, I think then a whole bunch of people signed up to Truth Social under the name Donald Trump, and they had to delete all those accounts. So I guess even they're <laughs> cancelling accounts. <laughs> All right, so it's listed, listed as uh, uh, NASDAQ DWAC. Yep. Currently, it is a 22-slide PowerPoint presentation yep. with a valuation of what? $3 billion. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. So Three... here's, here's a crazy stat. Uh, according to FactSet, uh, more than 470 million shares of DWAC changed hands during Thursday's trading session, so the day after it was announced. In comparison, uh, SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, only traded about 32 million shares. That's not so like more than 10x the volume on this Trump link stack <laughs> in the S&P 500 ETF. Like I mean, it is just a number mayhem. one number one mention on Wall Street bets as well. Forget GameStop, it's all this now. Is this the new meme SPAC? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Yeah. But anyway. Look, the SPAC, uh, the SPAC market doesn't fail to continue to surprise. Um, it does not fail. <laughs> <laughs> plenty going on. Uh, it's, it, it's just, it's ridiculous that a company like WeWork is valued at nine. This uh, Trump is well, he, three. Here's the question that I want to end this with. We spoke about two big SPACs. WeWork, $9 billion market cap, but losing $3 billion. Call it in... A half, so call it six billion dollars annualized, or Trump's business three billion dollars, not losing any money. Which one would you rather? Well, which I, one guess would you rather have? I guess from a fundamentals cash flow <laughs> point of view, you'd rather take the Trump. But um, there you go. Clip that. <laughs> clip that. I'll just clip that. Use it in the promo. Do not clip that. Do not clip that. But look, it's fascinating and. Um, Look, uh, if this Trump <laughs> stuff gets off the ground, it's going to be really, really Look, it's not, it's not going to get off the ground. This is my high I, I, I think it, but it will in some form, but it's but not going to be the... Go on the slide deck and like at least a quarter of the slide deck is like, you know, Netflix has 200 million followers. Yeah, yeah. Trump had 86 million followers on Twitter. Therefore, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. he's almost as big as Netflix. Yeah. Twitter did all the heavy lifting yeah. for you. You just had to make an account. Yeah. And also, <laughs> just because you had 86 million followers on Twitter does not mean you're going to have 86 million users no way. on Truth Social. And of those 86, I reckon a large proportion would be people just following... For the, the entertainment. For the entertainment, yeah, the media. Yeah, yeah. Like, you've just clicked follow. But anyway, we'll let this all play out, but that does bring us to the end of today's episode. A lot going on in SPAC City. Uh, it feels like it's peak SPAC city, but we've been saying that for a long time now. I don't so, even think we're... Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. look, it feels like it's just going to keep keep, uh, keep on continuing. But we will leave it there. And, Ren, we're back tomorrow with Watchlist Wednesday. Can't wait. <laughs>